Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Spirit here, and today I'm going to bring you another Common Mistakes episode. And this time, the video is going to be about identifying your win condition. And what I mean by identifying your win condition is sometimes you got to play to your outs. you gotta, I, you got to see, look at the game and think to yourself, okay, do you think you can win this game if you play it safely? And the golden rule in Gwent, in my opinion, is... What you got to do is if you believe you can, you're in a good spot or you feel safe, you feel comfortable in the position you're in, you play it safe, you play it how you're supposed to, how it normally is supposed to be played out and you just play a normal game. But if you're in a bad spot, if things are going wrong for you, maybe you've got a very bad hand and you got a, you, you think you're going to lose if you try, if you play it safe, you might have to take a few risks. You might have to identify a win condition and say to yourself, okay, I'm going to have to assume my opponent doesn't draw this card or this card or something goes wrong for my opponent i'm going to take a few risks to maximize on points to try squeeze every little point out that i can and try out point my opponent yes it can go horribly wrong and my opponent might like punish me by playing by playing Geralt, or you know they might have a card that punishes me for that line of play but sometimes you might be in a, such a bad position that you have to take some risks to win the game obviously like i said if you're in a good spot if you think you're in a you're in an okay position you play it safe. If you think you're in a bad spot, you take some risks. Um, and it's difficult to obviously identify that. You have to know your matchups. You have to, you know, ga gauge your opponent's hand, think what they might have, what they might not have. And you've got to make, you know, a critical decision and decide whether you're going to play it safe or whether you're going to take some risks and try maximize on points. And that is basically called identifying a win condition. Identifying what are the ways you're going to win this game and playing to those ways. Um, and that's always important trying to figure out what's the way you're gonna win the game and you know figuring out a game plan that you know you can either play safely or maybe take some risks and still win the game um, assuming your opponent has a bad hand like I said they're not the, assuming your opponent's gonna have a bad hand is probably a very a ballsy assumption to make because often in Gwent by when it comes to round three at least there's a very high chance your opponent is going to draw you know the cards that they need or whatnot but if you think you're in a very very bad spot and there's almost no way to win the game otherwise sometimes you just have to assume to yourself and say I, I'm going to assume my opponent didn't draw Geralt or doesn't run Geralt or maybe some other card that might punish you um, and you're going to say to yourself okay I'm going to have to hope for the best play to the most amount of points that I possibly can and just hope my opponent doesn't draw that card. And that might be the only way you can win the game. Um, so sometimes you've got to make those decisions. And sometimes they work out. Sometimes they don't. But sometimes they're the only ways you can win. And that is basically identifying your win condition. So we're going to jump into a few games with Chesi, who's agreed to help me with this. Um, like I said, for the purpose of these videos, we have set up a scenario. So my opponent is not misplaying or anything. I am not misplaying. I am... Or if I might be misplaying. We might be misplaying, but it's going to be on purpose to set the scenario. So keep that in mind, and we'll jump into like one or two games, and you know, set the scenario and see how we do. Okay, so for the first game we're going to play is Harold the Cripple versus Bruva, a matchup that's generally quite fair for Harold the Cripple, but we're going to try put ourselves in a bad spot and try show how we're going to approach being a bad spot. Um, okay, so we lose coin flips. That's the first thing that we don't really want to see in this matchup. Matchup is. A little bit coin flip dependent, but still fair for us. So we'll mulligan this. Um, we'll mulligan away maybe um, the boat. Don't really need it right now. And then I guess mulligan that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. In a position like this with a hand like this, I normally actually wouldn't commit Hans Nut or try to take with bronzes. But let's let's just say, for example, we we have no other pack to play, so we're gonna play this. And we commit a lot, even though we're on blue coin, and we're in this position. So let's 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 go ahead and put this scenario down. Um we play Hans Nut here, and um we're obviously overshooting round one a bit, so that's gonna make our bleed a bit more difficult because we've now committed more resources we've than we'd normally like to, but um for the purpose of this video, long. let's just go with this scenario and see how it goes. So we'll play this next then. Fill our hearts with wrath. And then we will probably play maybe a shield maiden next. Onward, Fryhead! Okay, so he plays a dragoon there, that's fine. We'll go ahead and play this then. Trigger that, use TA, and then we will probably pass. Well, he'll probably pass. He'll play one more card and then pass. Um, so we'll have to play one more card too. I guess we play this is the last card. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe drop. Honestly, in this situation, I would probably normally pass here. There's a lot of points to make up as the Brewer player, but you typically don't want to be losing round one anyway. So we'll just keep, we'll just go with it. We'll play one more card and then he'll pass, we'll pass. We're going to round three and um, 
we will try see what happens there so he passed here as expected we will go into round two and we'll see how we do with the bleed so we definitely want to bleed here because this matchup is quite bad for us if we go into long round three so we'll try bleed up and see what we can do with the bleed and um yeah so we'll go ahead and mulligan away this um we'll mulligan away probably this eh, you might want to keep this for totem um we're only two of them though one's okay okay so we definitely want to bleed here we definitely definitely want to bleed so we'll play totem um and then we'll maybe play boat or if we can perhaps even play primal savagery um let's start with the totem start with the totem and then we'll see Our brothers in the valleys okay so it starts with agitator we'll go ahead and kill that and then we'll probably play butcher and then we'll see So, okay, he plays justice. Interesting. Um, so that's caught him up to our score. So we've got to be very, very careful here. Um, I think it's okay to still play one more card. But we've got to be careful we don't overstay our welcome here. Because it is Bruva and Bruva, of course, is able to... Once they get ahead, they can relatively easily stay ahead sometimes. Which is a bit of an issue for us. So we'll do this. Um, we still have muzzle to utilize. Um, we'll see. So, we might play Muzzle next, um, potentially. It's about the only thing we really can play here, actually. And then maybe pass. So he plays Ida. I'm gonna maybe play, um... Skull here to kill an elf. I fear nothing. And then decide if I wanna commit Muzzle or not next. Right. <sighs> so let's see what happens here. Morin. Okay, now the score lines are getting close and I'm getting a little bit scared because all it takes is one Skaggs to come down and we might lose our card here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pass here. In a normal match, I might actually carry on pushing out, probably play something like muzzle first. But I'm gonna pass here to put ourselves in a little bit of a worse position just just to showcase what I mean. Um, actually, I would probably play Muzzle here, but let's, let's for the purpose of this video, let's go into a, a, a longish round three, which is not ideal for us against Bruva, and see how we do there. So I'm passing here. I would normally not pass here, but I'm passing here just for the purpose of this video. And um, we'll go into round three, and we'll try have a you know slightly worse position to be in, and um, see how it does for us. We'll mulligan this. We've got the Geralt, which is important. Um, this... Is kind of a bit of an issue, so we'll do that. Okay, so we've got the we've got the Marauder, we can play that proactively. Um, we've got the Royal Decree for Dagger, which is nice. And um, we want to obviously... I'm not... Honestly, a long round three like this with Bruva, I don't think we're in an amazing position. So it's kind of scary because he has still got a big Skaggs. He's got um, potentially, you know, Oak. Um, big Mulva, that's kind of scary. So here's the thing. That Mulva is going to be a big, big issue. The question is, can I win this game? Um, actually, I can play. I guess I can play the Marauder, and then I can play Leader potentially. So we're going to play the Marauder here. Um, a long round three like this is a bit worrisome um, against Bruva. We'll see. Okay. So here's the thing. I can play Dagger Leader last, um, but I'm not sure it's going to put me in the best position. Um, if he's got Oak and... Um, Skags and whatnot. I think he's going to be able to outpoint me here if I try to play it safe. So I'm going to say I'm in a bad position here and I'm going to go ahead and play Royal Decree for Dagger early and hopefully he doesn't have Geralt and hopefully we get rewarded for this kill. Two engines in one go because I honestly, I'm not sure if we're going to win here in this round length against Bruva. Um, he's still got Brigade, still got three leader charges. We might be in a bad spot here if I don't do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and um, see if this we get rewarded for this line of play um so he's using lead ability that means he doesn't have Geralt so that's good we've made the right call he doesn't have Geralt um we'll see if this line of play won us the game it might have honestly Bruva is the kind of deck with in a long round three with Melva like that 
we could be in a lot of trouble. We could be in quite a bit of trouble otherwise. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, over here, not much else to do besides play this, I suppose. And then maybe play something like Butcher next. Um, Okay, skags. Okay, big skags. Um, I think we'll go ahead and do this then. Try to get this down to five so we can muzzle it potentially. This is Elven Land, Okay, here comes the brigade. Your kind dies. Here comes the brigade. It's a lot of points. The brigade's gonna be. Um, Kills on both, that's a bit annoying for me. Um, so we'll go ahead and play the Ulfiden onto the brigade. And then we have Hjalmar for a eight point play, which is decent. <laughs> Leave it to us. Oh, we brick here. Yeah. Um, so we'll play the Hjalmar here. We'll get rid of L5. Hit that. And um, Let's see what his last two. Obviously, the, the, the last one of the last two cards. Um, so we have a not so great muzzle. So we'll take the not so great muzzle here. And his last card is probably Oak. Um, okay, so relatively close game. Even though my opponent bricked, relatively close game. Not that far off. So the thing with this here is that. If I, I got a lot of points for playing that, that, that leader dagger early. I got a lot of points there. I denied at least six or seven points um, off the Mulver. And honestly, he could have won by seven points. And also, not just that, but I also killed an engine. I killed two engines in one go. If I didn't take that early leader, I think I lose this game. Um, so it's important to realize you're in a pretty bad spot there because you don't want to be going into a long round three against Bruver. If I didn't take that early leader dagger, I'm pretty sure you get enough points here to win. So sometimes you got to say to yourself, okay, my, some you got to assume something goes wrong for your opponent. He didn't draw the Geralt and he bricked. And if it wasn't for those cards, if he didn't brick and he didn't and he did draw Geralt, we lose here 100% um, if we take that line of play. But if we play it safe, we also lose here. So sometimes you got to just assume things are not going to go right for your opponent. you got to assume, you know, things are going to go for the best for you, the best case scenario for yourself and play to your best case scenario um, to try get a win in a, in a scenario which you think you're going to otherwise lose um, if you try to take the safe line of play. Okay, so for this game we're going to be playing, um, we're going to be playing Syndicate versus Squirtle. And we're going to try to put our opponent in a pretty bad position, which is what we want to do. We want to put our opponent in a bad position and let's see how they respond to that. Do they take the safe line of play or do they actually do some risky lines of play to try to win the game? Um, so we might have get away the Redanian ship. Um, we got the Graden, which is nice. Um... I think we can go ahead and probably mulligan away, perhaps Swindle, since we've got Siggy in hand. Um, okay, so that's fine. Um, that's okay. So, if he, um, if he, it, seeing as though he lost coin flip, we can play Siggy, we can really try to pressure our opponent, which is what we want to do, and hopefully be able to win on even, and that should put our opponent in a pretty bad position winning on even. Should make things very awkward for our opponent. Um, so, let's see what our opponent does here. Okay, so, um, is he going to, I guess he's thinking if he's going to tear that or not, um, if he does tear, okay, so he's not tearing it, but we don't really have an answer for it, so, I think for now, though, we'll just play, um, hmm, so we can play Siggy here, or we can play a bounty on it, uh, I guess we put a bounty on it, should be okay. So we can start killing that, then we can kill it next turn with the execution, which we probably want to do because if that goes off, it's pretty much a big issue for us. So I think we do this. Uh, if he TAs it, then we can play Graden on it, which is okay. If he doesn't TA it, we kill it with um, the executioner. So either way, we should be able to kill this pretty easily, which is, of course, ideal for us. So let's see what he does to respond to this. You're lucky to keep your heat. Okay, so he plays a keeper's muscle and he TAs this. Okay, so then we just go ahead and play Graden then, I suppose. Um... Go ahead and play Graydon, kill that off, and stop the carryover. And the next time we can probably play an Executioner, get our boat out, and then we'll see from there. Okay, so things are thinning. Um, we'll go ahead then and play Executioner, get our boat out, and see what his response to this will be. 
I imagine there might be a pass now, or maybe he wants to keep going, try to keep the game control. Okay, so he's still going. It's interesting. Um, so at this point, then I think we can go ahead and probably just empty out some coins here. Um, and play bear, probably. And now he's in a bit of a position, a, a little bit of a tricky spot because now we can potentially win uneven, which is obviously not some a situation which he would like to be in. So we'll see how he responds to this. Um, Gather, move on, lads. Look alive. Barclay. Okay, so he's playing Barclay here. Um, I think then we can probably go ahead and drop this. And you your still stay ahead so we can just pass here. And then we can maybe play Jackal for most amount of points. We'll see what he does here though. So we should be able to stay ahead of him now. Um, we should be able to stay ahead of him. Let's see what he does. Okay, so he's playing last straight. Um, so we play this next. We we'll use one charge here. And then we'll empty out the rest of the charges here. And that should let us win an even, which is obviously what we would really like. So we're going to go ahead here and, and pass and win an even, which is great. We committed great and we committed um, bear. We didn't commit that much, which is nice. Um, he didn't commit much either, so it's nice we win an even. So now he's in a bit of a bad spot. Obviously, losing an even is not something you want to, not a position you really want to be in. So I guess it's pretty good for us winning an even. Um, so we got muzzle, we got witch hunt executioners, but we don't have much other ways to, you know, generate value. So. I think we just pass, we'll go for the long round three, and um, we'll see how it's a long round three. Hopefully we can find our Morils, hopefully we can find our Philippa. Um, if we don't find those cards, we might be in a little bit of a situation, but we'll see. Um, so for now, we'll just pass here. Um, let's see what happens here for next round. Plays Gabor, gets care of round three, sure. Um, but we're going to long round three, and we are upper card, which is obviously a pretty good position to be in. So hopefully we can find our Philippa, hopefully we can find our Morils, and if we don't, that could be a problem because then he could do certain lines of okay so we got my reels that's one good card we could we definitely want to find we'll probably kick one eavesdrop okay so unfortunately missing philip and we got no way to get philip because he didn't draw real decree so the problem with this is okay so yeah it's exactly what's going on so he's playing defenders so this line of play is risky because if i have philip i can steal one of these and that's really really bad for me if i can steal one of these because then it's actually just giving me an engine um unfortunately i don't have philip i can kill one of them with my reels and I can renew the other one, I can grade in the other one, but it's very inefficient. It's still, I now have to use my, my, my renew and whatnot on this, which is not ideal. And without Philippa, I can't punish this as much. I can still obviously kill, I can deal with it, but I can't punish it as much as I'd like to. So I guess we're gonna do this. Then we'll play more on one of these, and then we'll have to play renew for grade on another one of these. Um, at that point, we've lost a lot of value just to deal with these engines, which is a bit of an issue. So he's going for another one, going for three of them. That's very spooky for me. So obviously this line of play, if you if, if I have Philippa, I deal with this very, very easily. I'll probably win the game here. But without Philippa, I can't punish this. So my opponent has taken the line of play of going for defenders instead of going for the safe and never great injustice. But it's very punishable by... by, by um, by Philippa, but unfortunately I don't have Philippa, so... I can't exactly punish this like I would like to, so I guess we can't do too much about that, which is not ideal for us, but we'll try our best, I guess, regardless. Um, so he's going for the clean, that's fine. Um, I think at this point we probably go ahead and play the um, Witch Hunt on that, and then we can play um, Renew for, for Graden on that, which is okay, but not ideal. Um, I guess we could also go for, for eavesdrop and see if we can find Philippa with eavesdrop. Um, but like I said, without um, without um, the Philippa, there is not much I can do to punish. I can try punish some of it, but I can't punish all of it, which is not great for me. Um, but we'll see. I cross the play Evil Pulsardi. He hasn't got any leader charge to move it, so maybe Evolt actually okay. Yeah, if he kills, I can renew. Uh, but I'm renewing. Okay, I mean, I'm renewing Grain anyway. I don't really want to renew this, so I guess you can't actually do that. Um, yeah, it looks like he's just gonna have to get these poor values to go through. It seems. Um, so at this point, I think we just renew for for Graydon. Um, I think we just renew for Graydon here, yeah. and we're gonna get four puts at eight. Yeah, we want to probably spend some crowns actually. 
So we'll do this, kill that. Um, but like I said, he... Without Philippa, I can't punish this. He might win this game with this line of play. With, but if, you, if you think your opponent is Philippa, um, or if you expect Philippa, the safer line of play here is to go for Nova Grad and Justice because not as punishable by Philippa. Um, of course, I still get a decent Philippa value over here if I had Philippa, but ah, yes. without, without Philippa, this growing might just be too many points that I, that I can't deal with. Um, so we'll see if we, we find the Philippa now, but at this point, I don't think it's, I think it's too late anyway. Um, actually, I think we first play this MTR bank a little bit. I fear it's far too late to suddenly turn neutral. I think it's too late for Philippa, even if we can find Philippa or not, but like I said, um, this line of play is very, very greedy. It plays for a lot of points, but it is punishable. And unfortunately, we don't have the punish for it. So we'll play eavesdrop. Um, no Philippa, it seems. So without Philippa, I can't exactly punish this. So we'll see if we've got enough points. His last cards are Oak. And um, yeah, if it's Oak, I think it just wins. But we'll see what we can do. We have a decent muzzle. We have pretty good value here, I think. But I'm not sure if it's going to be quite enough. We'll see. The time of the white cross and white okay, so he plays Ida on this. Um, ah. Yeah, he's already seen all my tall punish. I guess he's not. He's, there's no. He's, he's not scared of any more tall punish. So he's just keeping that out of any type of, you know, damage range. It might reset the value. So we'll just muzzle her this. I guess not much else to do right now. Um, we'll play muzzle on this. Then we'll probably play um, witch hunter, Caleb or Caleb first. Maybe he doesn't have a removal for it. We'll play Caleb. Which hunt and I'll play Evil last and see what happens. Um, Some things so there's Malane. Um, so I guess you play this now. Last card is probably Oak. Probably. Big Oak actually. Um, so can I actually kill that? Do 11 ah. damage that needs to ping 12. Could kill that. Could kill it, right? So we do this. High time the north is cleansed. Okay. So let's see if there's enough points yet, but I'm not sure if there will be enough. We'll see. Okay. Some leader charges here. Kill that. Kill this. And then do as much damage as we can. So, actually end up being quite a close game. The fact that my opponent assumed I had no Philippa probably won the game. If I had Philippa there, I'm winning this game. So my opponent took a very risky line of play. If you take Novigrad Injustice, it's not vulnerable to Philippa. Um, it's not as many points, but it's not as punishable. So if I have Philippa there, I'm pretty easily winning that game. My opponent was in a bad position. So he obviously took a line of play that, um, that won in the game by playing safely, or not playing safely, by playing riskily. He played risky, he played around the Philippa, he took some risks, and that ended up winning in the game, um, by not playing around Philippa. Because if I had Philippa there, I win that game. But he obviously thought to himself, okay, I'm in a bad position, I've got to take some risks, I've got to play for maximum value, and he played for maximum value, and he was rewarded by it. He narrowly won, but because he narrowly won because he took those risks, he took those risky line of plays, and that ended up winning the game. So that's what I basically mean. You've got to identify your win condition. You've got to evaluate the position you're in, think to yourself, can I win this game if I play it safely? And if you think you need to take some risks, then you sometimes just take some risks and you win the game. Um, if your opponent doesn't have the cards that you hope they don't have. Obviously, it's not always going to work. Sometimes the scenario will happen and your opponent will have the punish and you will lose anyway. But at least you give yourself an opportunity to win. You find a way to win the game. And sometimes you might win games that are un otherwise pretty much unwinnable. And that's basically what I mean by finding your win condition. Evaluating if you think you can win under normal circumstances. And assessing whether you need to take some risky lines of play to maybe find a win. Or, or you know, play it safe and try, you know, work with what you have and win with that. So basically, you either got to choose between a certain loss or a probable loss and obviously you always want to take the probable loss over the certain loss because at least you have some kind of win condition which gives you some odds and that's what Gwent is it's a game of playing for odds it's a game of you know 
working with the numbers and finding what gives you the best percentage or best chances of winning in given situations but i hope you guys learned something new i hope you guys you know i hope this helps you improve your game and if it does ask me any other questions you might have about this topic in the in the um, comments below and i'll definitely try to answer any other questions you guys might have or if you guys want come to my stream ask me i stream every day um ask me these questions live and i'll be more than happy to try to help you out my link will be in the description below and of course my opponents as well chasey who has obviously helped me out with this video but yeah thank you guys so much for, for watching really appreciate it, and i'll see you guys again next time bye guys